Can't see if y'all saying anything. So okay, I'm saying Just like waving her hands, that's what they used to do at her school. Salute to everybody that's illegal right now, trying to beat traffic. You're not going to. 
So, as you can see, we do what hasn't been done before. We're going to keep on going. So, we appreciate the support, all the love we got in Montgomery tonight. What's up, what up, what up? Them niggas was here, they just ain't watched the whole show. They were smoking downstairs. But, you know, it's love down here, man. Montgomery. Security. We don't know what you guys were securing, but you're doing it as soon as possible because that'll come back in the church. All right. So Montgomery, we love you. We appreciate you. We'll never leave you. But we gotta leave you tonight. But we're still here in spirit. Because that's what the world is about. It's about spirit. It's not about any other stuff. Thank you, Montgomery. From myself, from Carlos Miller, and from DC Young Fly, we appreciate you. I don't know what he's making noise for, but you know. He's excited about something, probably, that we're in Montgomery. Baltimore, Maryland. May 31st and June 1st, I will be at the Baltimore Comedy Factory. All the surrounding areas. Get your tickets and come check me out. Now, I'm only doing this video because everybody keeps saying, Chico, oh my God, it's almost the 31st. The tickets aren't selling. What the fuck this video gonna do? You think somebody who ain't coming to see me gonna be like, oh, well, I wasn't going to see that nigga, but he made a video, so now I got to go. Nah. But, you know, everybody got rules to follow, so I got to follow the rules that I'm under. So, May 31st, June 1st, Baltimore Comedy Factory. I'm making this video so everybody can leave me the fuck alone. Get your ticket. Two, my check one two one two. We are live. We vibrant up here. as my audio. <laughs> yeah, it's for dramatic effect. Oh, okay, this one's it. Uh, uh, uh. Got two though. They gave you one. one for you. He let me hold the old one. one. He got the first one. one. <laughs> this keep this intro. Where did you get a name from? How about that? So this one's mine. Right. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Oh, it's come boy. Man, man, you don't drink this shit. <laughs> this is how you sauce girls girl. on trees. <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> this is how you start here in Sit, Poppy, right. sit. No. Mira, it's not, he's not a dog. No. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sit down. All right, mic check, mic check, mic check. Is this thing on? All right, you know the vibes, you know what time it is. We are counting down to New Year's. Fuck is going on? I am your humble, grateful, not now. I am your humble, grateful, boy, these white boys gonna talk over my intro, even on the special. <laughs> Damn it, some things don't say. Nothing special but just being at your house with different mics. We are, we are the JBP. Welcome to our end of the year wrap up. This is officially my fourth year end wrap up. My first time doing it with my brothers, my friends, my co-workers, my peers. And it has to be this way because as a crew, we have alienated ourselves from all of the other media people. <laughs> That's a I normally do this with Charlemagne. I don't know where the relationship stands. Act is, act 
It's over. That's gonna be Rob fun. Rob man, I'm sure they got a talk coming for you at some point. <laughs> <laughs> B-Dot, Elliot, who else we got? Star, <laughs> Nori, I was just with you. Hey. Shout out to Star. All, oh, no, shout, no. shout out to all of our peers. Shout out Miss Jones. Who have helped make this year an amazing year in artistic journalism, uh, documenting the culture, uh, Parts, critiques, so forth and so on. And with that said, yo, man, it was a real, real tough, tough, active year in the tech world. Right. Uh, a lot of upcoming apps that were out there trying to solidify their spot. Do you guys have a, a favorite app this year that really like found that. a place in your heart? I know it's tough. It might be a tough debate. I know I it's tough. I only used one app the entire year. I yeah. yeah, I mean... I don't want to jump the gun quick, but uh, for me, it was just cash out. Yeah. You too? You want to come work in it? Us, what you guys have on your list? Just the same one. Mm -hmm. Same one that I use. Green app? It go Holes, Best Rapper, Cash App. Yeah. Empowered by, sponsored by, enabled by, tolerated by, getting mad passes by, totally understood <laughs> by, <laughs> Cash App. Uh, it's important. We appreciate you. Thank you and salute to the year that y'all have had. Even and, right. and thank you, thank you for the partnership. Forward thinking app. Okay, so now that we have clearly established Cash App to be the number one app in the world, mm. and kind of the biggest one. And it is. Yes. Cash App might have been the biggest one. They even slotted moments this year. They funded the moments. <laughs> and thank you. Yeah, 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 no, thank you for funding the moments. And with that said, um, we got a lot, a lot to get to. Now, I want to start with all of you people that contributed to putting music out this year. You won. I do want to. I do want to start there. That's uh, you're, you're better than us because I would have been terrified. <laughs> I know, I commend y'all. Yeah. Putting out music in 2020, y'all deserve just applause for that period. Yeah. Especially if you're on like a, a label label. <laughs> Either way. Because yeah. if you wasn't on a label, you were going to survive off touring. True. Mm -hmm. So I commend y'all. Yeah. Every artist that puts something out this year. Every I'm artist. Like, you know, every artist. <laughs> I'm clapping. Up. <laughs> every yeah, artist. We relied, we relied on touring too. Facts. <laughs> I'm still a little tight about our tour being canceled. I sat with my, my accountant December of 2019 with all the things I had lined up for the year. And my accountant went, hey man, you're probably going to make more money than you've ever made in your entire life this year. You're going by everything you have scheduled. Uh -huh. And boy, did I call my mom to see how whatever you need. Right. I did the same shit. I did the same shit. I remember Christmas last year. This time last year? Oh, I was mom. Just like, put it back. Whatever you need. <laughs> put it back. <laughs> I was talking cash shit at Christmas time last year. Like, oh, man, 2020 is going to be crazy. 2020 was nuts on the couch. Y'all were right. 2020 was crazy. Uh, it wasn't the right one. It wasn't the right crazy. I was right, though. I somehow got caught up in counting money that didn't come yet. And I conned my accountant into doing it with me. <laughs> like, yeah, it wasn't something my accountant was trying to like. Yeah. Push. He, we were just going through everything to plan out the 2020 year. He was like, this is gonna, we're gonna make a lot of money this year. Yeah. And my dumbass, who's never made a lot of money, he was like, oh well, let's run it up. <laughs> this is just one of the lessons you gotta learn the hard way. Yes. Learning off experience is the best way to, to learn. It really is. Like, just failing. I'm still with money. I'm pretty frugal with money, still with money but it, it still hurt. It still hurt. I looked in my closet of all of the expensive threads that had not even touched my body. <laughs> just sitting there for no Put the reason. tags on them just in case. Yeah, I was like, oh, 2020, we doing like 20 dates. I'm aware of this in Dallas. <laughs> At his late, he had his late months early. Right. For, for, the, for the October show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what this year told me. Just, yeah. just shut the fuck up and wait to see what happens. All right, sweet pleasure. It's the account. Uh, I'm laughing and joking, but the reality of it is, and I do want to be serious sometimes today, <laughs> is that we had a seven-figure tour planned. Oh, yeah. So, nah. Yeah. <laughs> I know y'all are making jokes. Oh, you got to do things. I mean, it was my first part time being part of a tour that broke that type of money yes, with that workload yeah. and I did look forward to it. Yeah. I did. I did uh, one craft month, uh, a little 
Tahoe runs across the country. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, and not only that, we not only our podcast shit. Palooza ended the year in Barclays. Mm-hmm. You talk a little different with Live Nation and your tour routing when you end the year with an arena. Yeah. That money was looking way different than it had ever looked before. I bet. And they said, what? Yeah. <laughs> On this flow. So for me, again, the artists that have had to create music, the artists that have had to create a new way of living, the artists that have had to um, find new people, I know, probably, new people to be in their corner, new people at the label to support them, just new ways to gain momentum, new ways to go viral. This year indicated Y'all having to figure out a new way to do everything. So before we go further, I want to salute y'all. I want to congratulate y'all. And I want to commend y'all before I begin to shit on any of you. Um, The shitting comes from a warm place. And we just have to do it because if it was great in the year, then it was bad in the year. And I don't think before, I think before we even get into the music side of things, because all of that type of stuff took a backseat this year. And... It was life changing and the world changing and us adapting as humans. And for me, that started even before 2020 hit with Juice World's passing in December. Mm-hmm. Um, that set the tone in hindsight. Uh, again, like I said on the pod, that was one of my mom's favorite acts. He was he was on his way to doing doing some amazing things. So yeah. that hurt. And then when January came, Kobe's passing, not even maybe three weeks later, that was a lot. And then a month later was Pop Smoke. This is before any quarantine lockdown right, yeah. the world. So, I mean, for me as a musician or retired musician, the year was really weird. And I think that was highlighted because we were celebrating the end or beginning of a decade. So normally when you do that, you're like, ah, hey, you listen. You're like, ah, we going up, we going up, we going up. Bobby, you all right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, no, I think with the decade shit, like, I don't ever fault the people that try to use New Year's as a way to start new things and become better people. I've never faulted. I know it's become a joke, New Year, New Year shit. Ooh. I've never, I, like, I understand. All right, if you're going to use time as a way to reset yourself, cool, let's do it that way. So when the decade happened, we all went into this, it's a whole new decade. Mm-hmm. I can change so much off the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. And then you start Kobe to Pop Smoke, even though those aren't, you know, we didn't personally know those people. We're part of our culture and yeah, our everyday life. Like, yeah, we grew up with Kobe. Mm-hmm. All right. Boy, does that put a whole hinder on how I think I'm starting this new, fresh start of everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and even as like a 90s baby, by the decade is by the decade for me. Mm-hmm. I turned 30 in 2020, it's 2010 turned 20, like that whole shit. So I was like, bro, I'm starting off literally a whole new decade in my life. Right. And that's how it starts. <laughs> yeah. But I think more than anything, you know, it also taught us how, how resilient we are as, um, as humans, um, how resilient our, our culture is. Because it was it was times I know for me when we first went to lockdown there was like a lot of questions like right, what is this yeah but we've never been told we had to lock down quarantine at all so we didn't you know we didn't know what to expect there was a lot of like anxiety and people were just nervous and what was going on and then you look up and it's June July and it's like eh, not that bad right and now we in December and it's like damn we went through a lot we did. you know what I mean like we made it through a lot a lot of things happening um, there were some moments of Normal, normalcy, I guess. In the summertime, we had a couple, yeah, of, couple, couple little pockets here and there with things. Kind of felt a little normal, but um, for the most part, I, I like the way artists found a way to maneuver. Yeah, I like the way our culture found a way to maneuver around things. And, uh, and not only that, uh, even outside of music, like it was cool during the summer with the pandemic and everything, and there was just restaurants and bars. You go get a drink on the street in New York. I don't know how it was in the rest of the country, but yeah. everywhere was kind of like normal. Yeah, that was kind of yeah. Good. That was yeah. Nice. It was definitely different, but it wasn't... Um, we made the most of it. Yeah, we made the most of it. So I think what we're saying here is in one of the biggest moments in, of the year is lockdown. 
Oh, absolutely. One of the biggest lockdowns in human history. Oh, yeah. Quarantine. Kind of dictated off lockdown. All the wild shit happened was just a the family tree of lockdown. Mm -hmm. We started with quarantine and we all adjusted and wild shit happened because we were all sitting in the entire What was the first change or adjustment that you guys noticed about yourselves during that initial part of quarantine? Mm -hmm. Like for me, I learned how important human interaction was for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I found myself like insta-living a lot. Not because I was just having a blast, but because I just needed to talk to people and avoid the four wall syndrome and cabin fever and, and all that shit that comes with being locked in the house. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did a lot of Zooms with family members and, you know, friends that I consider family, and that, that was great. And every weekend, you know, getting drunk and hanging out, looking at the screens, that was a lot of fun. I did a lot of, um, I got rid of a lot of clutter. Yeah. Things that you know you, you don't need. Yeah, yeah. Like you, I, I became like minimal is more. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and I, that was one of the things I learned on myself is that I have way more than I thought I needed. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about way more. Like, I can never not be grateful. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I think I can speak for all of us. Like, going through this quarantine and this pandemic. Like, yeah, things change, but at the same time, you know, family is healthy, bills are paid, yeah. food's on the table. You're still able to move around and do some of the things we like to do. And, um, you know, at, at first you think you're missing out on it, and then you realize, like, I have more than I need. Yeah. I have more than enough. And that, that was one thing I learned about myself through this whole year is that I definitely have way more than enough. Yeah, I'm extraordinarily thankful. Despite the fact that we just joked about losing all this money, we still had enough to, you know, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't want to sound like we're complaining about music yeah, yeah, yeah. the tour. I'm I think about music well, the tour. Absolutely. <laughs> I think, I mean, I'm getting married this year, it, but next year. Thank you. Yeah, I, I was able to open a friend. Yeah, I wanted to buy a house and shit. Like, shit is fucked up. That's going to that's gonna take a while. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, I, what I learned about myself, I was just shift gears. No, what I learned during quarantine for real was how many hobbies I don't have. I, I, I had a therapist ask me, like, I said, what do you do to, like, for enjoyment outside of work? Yeah. And I'm like, nah, I, I work, I love, I'm blessed to be here, do what I love is work. Yeah. And she was like, nah, it's great, I love that. Yeah. Like, what do you do outside of work that makes work? you happy? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I am. I have no idea. I'm like, wait, am I a really shallow dude? Yeah, I, don't, yeah, I, yes. I don't know. So in quarantine, I started finding out all the hobbies I didn't have. I was like, oh, wow, I don't, if I can't work, I don't know what to do. You know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who the fuck yeah. have I been? That's weird. Yeah, no, gyms, my no gyms was rough. I was working out with rubber bands and shit. Like, shit got weird for a while there. Because you, as humans, we have a routine. I'm glad that they're just skipping over what you said. <laughs> So like, what about the gyms? <laughs> Rubber bands. Yeah, we couldn't work out, man. Damn, Joe don't get the hobbies either, man. I'm so with Rory on this. Yeah. Like, yeah. that became a real, uh, that became like a real tough question in dating. And dating during quarantine was tough, too. But it was like, hey, what do you do for fun? And without work, and without restaurants and bars and clubs, mm -hmm. I was like, do I even know myself? I don't know how exist. Yeah, yeah, like, exist. Yeah, no. I must have hard as a, a single gentleman. You actually speak on that. Yes. Yeah, we'll get to that later. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's hard for someone. Yeah. No, it, it, it was. I walked back to that day. The fuck it ain't so much. What used to be a popping your mouth? I don't know. I'm popping my mock neck. <laughs> Walk right through that. Yo, Parks mentioned something. And for me, because my memory is bad, I'm going to try to go through some of this in like chronological order. So lockdown was big mm -hmm. after the deaths. And Parks mentioned Zoom, which for me, there's a few things this year because of how wild the year has been where at di different times I've loved something about the year and I've gone on to hate that very same thing. You? No. Zoom is right on that list. Oh, yeah. yeah. Zoom, I'm super appreciative for all that y'all have contributed to the year. For sure. Many of us would not have been able to get work done uh -huh. without you, no, which was important because Spotify was riding my dick to use you guys to get back to work. So thank you. Showed you how to use it. Yes, he did. So Zoom, thank you. And I hear that you guys' stock is up, up. Oh man, like, the rich getting richer. Up, 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 up. Awesome. I hate Zoom. 
Uh, I, I hate mean, it. I hate to, yeah, I, I hate it too. I hate it. I hate relying on it. You know what we do, I hate yeah. it. I don't hate Zoom. It's I not. hate people. People have used Zoom to make me more angry. It's not Zoom. I love that I can just click something and see somebody if I need to. Right. I think that's great. Right. I've never envied a conference call in my life more than 20 I used to hate conference calls. Yeah. Now I'm like, yo, can we just talk on the phone? I don't need to see y'all faces. I, I don't need to see the months. weird background of your home and your family pictures or your really disgusting kitchen right. or when I'm finding out how much money you are making or not making and yeah. I start making a judgment call of who I'm talking to. <laughs> Yeah. Just like, why can't I just get on the phone with you or text or email? Yeah. That's what I miss. And people are just like, no, let's do a Zoom one-on-one. -on -one. Or I could call you. Right, right, right. Yeah, relying on the Zoom as a tool is annoying because it's like seven times more work than just getting on a phone call or email or text or meeting in person. Like, yeah. I gotta make sure the lighting's right and shit. Like, and I'm not even that guy, but you have to. The IG Live thing got a little weird for me. Mm -hmm. So many people were just talking to each other on IG Live, and it was like, I'm glad you brought it there I'm because like, what is going on? my man of the year is probably the nice. That's oh, reasonable. Yeah. He came up. Yeah. Deservedly so. Nice Deservedly so. And so. at the darkest the time in, in quarantine, so he yeah. brought some joy. He Fam. right when we was at our What D nice <laughs> did for my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can never repay him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I look like D nice. A lot of people didn't know about D nice. Cool. I wasn't one of those people. D nice didn't come up. Like, he didn't gain a whole bunch of new relationships, industry-wise, by doing what he did. Like, it wasn't self-serving. His bag was already up. His relationships were already up. He had already done the inaugural, whatever, like, he did that. So that was purely, like, a selfless, oh, shit, the world is fucked up. And, and at the time, I was where Rory was. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how I'm coping in this house. I'm tired of Insta Live. I'm tired of all this shit. I don't feel a connection to people. D Nice was like the gateway to people when we thought we couldn't get to people. Like the whole club quarantine. I'm ground of what we love is music that we can all. Yes. Familiar act, familiarity. Once again, the hip hop culture saved the world. Yeah. But now, outside of D-Nice, I'm with you. Yeah. I hated all you niggas on Instagram. <laughs> now there's a lot of the DJ. DJ culture in general did a yeah. huge service oh, to, to, to... I'm not talking about the DJs. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And James Cross. But it just, it just showed corporate has been a corporate no matter fucking what. Oh. D-Nice did all that amazing culture shit. And all of a sudden, Chris Christie's in the comments like, love this funky tune. Uh, <laughs> What's this jazzy little number you're playing? <laughs> Just stop. Okay. Biggest moments of the year. Do well, I feel like we're that meme of those three little white kids sitting on the couch? <laughs> they put the, <laughs> the caption at the bottom. You guys talk to your friends. The podcast meme. Hmm? The podcast meme. Which one? The one that like, the picture and yeah. someone listening. That's not what you're talking about. No, I'm talking about the three white kids that are sitting on the couch that are like 11 and it says at the bottom is 6 9 a bitch for snitching. <laughs> <laughs> I think they put Maul's Young Boys as one of the names before two. That's right. The audio. <laughs> gonna pick that up. I don't know, Rory, because I don't look at pictures of white kids. <laughs> I figured this was our way to come back. Oh. All right. Biggest moments of the year. Uh, for me, naturally, Tori and Meg is high on that list, but that's not where Joe will start. I will start with a story that I took personal satisfaction and personal pride in this story developing right before our very eyes. Oh, uh, Jada and Will in August. <laughs> that was number one for you? Moments of the year. Hey, hey, presidential hey, drugs. Hey, 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 the perfect Smiths, not the perfects. Yeah. <laughs> not something going wrong with the perfects. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Look at you happy. Yes. That was, that was awesome to me. August being messy. Them replying, Red Table Talk. Him having an album. The internet being confused. This went on for weeks. I loved every second of it. One of my favorite stories of the year, also one of the biggest moments of the year. For sure. But it, it, it's, it's just unfortunate because it, 
unfortunate about everybody in the situation getting their rocks off. Everybody got fucked and was happy. No, I'm saying it's not unfortunate. August is upset. Smith is cool. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's why it's unfortunate because it's like, yo, you did that for what? August, you were a messy little thing this year. You get my messy little thing award. I'm giving you my messy little thing potty. Who else was in the room? A lot of messy. Me? You was a messy little thing. No way. This year? No. Nah. This is one of your cool Behind closed doors. Come on, this is for the cool. I didn't think I was so messy. Yeah, listen, salute to the Smiths. Salute to August Alcina. I thought that was an amazing, amazing just tale unraveling right before our eyes. Yeah. These guys don't seem to have appreciated. It was entertaining. No, it was, I, I appreciate the entertainment. No, I, mean, I, appreciate, I appreciate cleanups. Cleanups are funny. Yeah. But watching the bullshit that you can see through with a straight face is yeah. my favorite thing. Like, yeah. This sit down with Jada and Will at the red table was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Will, was Will just sitting there agreeing like, hmm, yeah, you were a bit entangled, huh? <laughs> Meanwhile, knowing what Will had already said to her six months earlier, I told you not to fuck that little kid in my house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and be honest, we, we could tell he said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was pretty transparent. Okay. Okay. And, and the people that just, just bite and agree with the cleanup like oh, how mature these two are look at well yeah going through no he said what he had to say he's over it now <laughs> that's why this looks so mature to you and here's the bullshit about all this i'm the only person that really enjoyed all this this album <laughs> <laughs> Yo, niggas didn't fuck with that album no uh, i loved it some of his it best was. work he's yeah. talented no he's very talented. talented he leaned a little too much into that and wasn't like 40 fucking records on it it was, it, was, it, was, it was just that that he didn't realize that those two names would overshadow and overpower anything he had done. Yeah. Then he came about the music. It was about the story after that. It and, he beefed with, and he beefed with Joe for calling him messy. He can't be somebody for it. He got, come on, you got to be real. You know that By the way, I think that's a really interesting point, Mo, just, just brought up. It's not just to own it. But it's to a lot of artists that try to go after the big moments and the big beefs to do their rollout. Yeah, Sometimes the realizing the that if you do a rollout too good and, and too much with fucking attention, no one's going to care about your music. No, it's you just need cool to too. balance the idea of I'm putting music out and I need to put out a good rollout that has attention. But the attention needs to be the music. Not that I, I thought the Will Smith's about. No, but not only that. It's that the Smiths will always be up here no matter who's making music unless you top fucking tier. Yeah, but you, not only that, though, it's Will Smith. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter what you got coming after Will Smith's name is mentioned, nobody hears it. <laughs> yeah. It's Will Smith. And that's just the bottom line. That's yeah, why. Like, Will Smith's music is behind Will Smith. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it, it was a messy moment for August, but he is talented, and I hope that 2021 he gets back to just the art. Leave the messy shit alone. Talented kid. Yeah, sure. I agree. Big stories for you guys. Meg Tory, Meg Tory, Meg Tory. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm probably the biggest on story still on of the year, right? Yeah. Or one of the biggest stories. I think we'll fully understand that sentence. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck the year. Uh, yeah. Just the existence of hip hop. The sentence, what, what happened happened, and we will find out, of Tory Lanez shooting Meg Thee Stallion. Just that sentence in hip hop. It's, it's fucking wild. Yeah. Right. Fuck this year. If that's a hip hop moment from 1978 to 2020. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. We never, we never uh, heard anything like that. Um, never experienced anything like that. Like we spoke about it when it first happened. This was definitely one of the wildest stories in our culture's history, for sure. And if it is, uh, and if this is what indeed happened, which is just still an ongoing case, it makes it even more unfortunate because. Two talented people, yeah. you know, somebody will go to jail, prison for somebody who's traumatized for the rest of their lives. It's just unfortunate all the way around. But this was definitely the, one of the wildest stories in our, in our culture. No question. Um, what else was big? What else was big this year? Um, Versus was big in the year. I'm still on creatively. I'm not on set. Yeah. Yeah. 
because all of the protests this year were big for me too. Mm -hmm. uh, the Senate seat changing was big for me. The election, the fuck, the all of that. Was this the year? It's been a crazy year. The impeachment, was, all that stuff was big. But creatively, right after Be Nice comes Versus for me. Boy, did they they just uh, they just provided a lot of bright spots uh, and a lot of a lot of back and forth that I just never thought I would see. Yeah. It was the brightest moment of the year to me, probably. Like, so. I know we, our listeners have joked about this is the versus cast now and all that shit. But like, mm -hmm. you see the impact that shit had this year and how yeah. it, I hate the word uplifted, but it was such a great moments like oh shit we get a versus this weekend yeah finally i got something to do and one of the only music i like we we did verses ourselves for fun for years yeah. Yeah. Okay. so of course we're going to talk about verses when it becomes an actual yeah i mean that's it sorry barbershop talk to begin with now we get to see it from the legends and they get paid for it and to your point of bringing everyone together the way d nice did we have a common thing to talk about that we all love yeah like, well that's what i was about to say outside of the creative genius behind Versus and what it's done and what it's meant for people. The business and the back end of now showing some of these companies and executives that there's value in your old catalog that maybe you didn't know how to get to today, mm -hmm. that was big. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it was also, again, for the, for the generation now who wasn't familiar with a lot of these artists, their back catalog. Yeah, I think that, that, that old that, old niggas. I never envisioned to be sitting home saying, "Hey, how do I get my streaming up?" Right, right, right. but it happened. Yeah. So I mean, man, especially like the early stages when it was songwriters and producers. Where you don't necessarily those are people that are as known. You know what I mean? Because especially now, there's no credits on any platform shot site. Which, which I would like to call out versus for. Uh, I think that was a. Uh, B. Cox that asked me if I thought Versus would ever get back to the producers and the writers, and unfortunately my response was no, just because it's Apple involved now. Um, the, the cachet seems to have changed a little bit, but I would love to see y'all get back to writers and producers and things like that. I disagree a little bit. I mean, not to take anything away from E-40 and Too Short, both legends in their own right, but still somewhat niche as far as what their music was. Of course, they had huge hit records, but that's a very Bay Area sound, and they still did that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be odd for them to go back to the Brian Michael Coxes of the world that wrote number one records for decades. I like, think they're still going to play really popular music if you go back to certain writers and producers. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the name isn't, but that's just how you market it. You have to figure out a way to market who these writers and producers are to get people to watch or they wrote all this for X, Y, and Z. Right. It, that's a marketing thing. I don't think it's far-fetched to say they'll go back to the legendary producers and writers. Yeah, because okay. we're, we're not that far on that. I won't debate with y'all about it. I mean, I hope y'all are right. I, I understand I would love your to, forecast. I would love to see it. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I love the writers and producers shit just because I'm a, I'm a music nerd, but I am also love pop music, and I love huge records. So it was such a great marriage of... Yeah highlighting the people behind the scenes that put this shit together but we can also jam out to records that everybody loves yeah the nerd in me loved all that early versus shit you took i thought that was great mm -hmm. like all the way through uh sean the sean garrett shit like it was hilarious but in the back of my mind i was like all right i don't care if this drunk ass is doing this people are finally going to give sean garrett some flowers well that's the funny thing about the behind the scenes guys you want to get some more characters that are willing to do some more funny shit than like a super duper star because they got to protect their image and corporate, you know, well, no doubt, <laughs> no doubt. But you're not going to see Alicia Keys show up hammer drunk and yeah. making funny faces. Like, it's not going to happen. So I hope that they do go back to that, at least like a uh, undercard thing that we talked about. Like, well, one of my favorite verses wasn't a verses at all. Actually, it was something that I put together, which was Hit Boy versus Boy Wonder. Yeah. And, talk this shit. Yeah. man, I won't talk too much shit because if that happened, Four to five months later for Hit Boy, this goes way different. Like we was, it, it was early on, but uh, I think that was one of my favorites, along with fucking Tim vs. Swiss early on. I just we'll get into our favorite verses. Hit Boy later. dropping that uh, Nipsey thing, might have, Nipsey vs. on Sean record, might have been the best moment of all the verses in my personal opinion. That was the most memorable thing. It was, it was really good. Yes, and I and I mean, just shout out to the people that were early on the shit. Because I mean, again, I don't know the business more than I asked for it. Wait, you're a podcaster? 
You don't know their business? You don't know their finances? Whoa. I think people like Boy Wonder and Hit Boy did this just to feed the fans during quarantine. Like, yeah. I know everyone now with Versus gets a bag, the strings going crazy, they benefit. Like, I think a lot of legacy acts are like, I can't wait to get that Swiss call. Yeah. Like, how much money I'm about to give off this shit. They was on IG in their own studios doing this shit for us. Like, right. that early Versus cast, we need to give credit to. Yeah. Like, Dream just don't do shit. And yeah. Dream did that. Yeah. Like, he did that for us. Uh, I don't know if he got money, but either way, it was on IG and they was just doing shit for fans in their living rooms that were miserable, like, I can't do shit. Yeah, I'm glad from a production standpoint that they moved on because it was an it's absolutely cool. horrid experience listening to it, but it was more fun when it sounded shitty. Well, that hit Boy and Boy won the uh, battle. That definitely accelerated both of their careers. They were both very, two very good producers already, but the artist that hit Boy and Boy won the work from Boy won. Oh, wait till you see when you were in the studio. I'll be talking. <laughs> <laughs> He's been in the studio. But, but do you don't think the two of them was already in those studios before Versus? Who? Boy Wonder's Wonder working with him. He hasn't. Boy Wonder was. I know. Who? But who he hasn't. Hit Boy works with Beyonce. Okay, but, <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, there's, there's I'm sure, other. I'm sure there's there's other, there's other, there's other inside the new Drake. Oh, man. Boy Wonder found the new Drake. There's other legendary artists. You, you made Drake make another one? No, there's other legendary artists. Mm. Mm. So, um, most Except there's so other schools. Okay. Tomorrow, shop. Like, legendary artists. Well, tell us, nigga. <laughs> give, us the, give us the sneak peek. You can't spill beans here. Who else could Boy Wonder be in the studio with that he hasn't been in? Michael? Michael? We'll see. Prince? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. 21. God will. Why you didn't get Coogee down to your socks? We didn't see it well. Uh, Nike I'm still a fan of the Coogee sock. Not Nike socks. I like Coogee. Christmas. Oh. Christmas. That's good. Oh. Yeah, you know. Oh. Oh. Coogee, oh, Coogee sock. Not Nike tech socks with a Coogee. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Go, no, you're not comfortable. Big. Comfortable socks. You're not big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Grammy, the Grammy debacle. Yeah. The first one and the second one. There was two, I think. The Grammys that happened this year. Yeah. Was it? Two, what was the, well, the, the Grammy announcements that just happened recently and then the Oh yes, okay, okay. Yeah. Both both of them. Yeah, the Grammys is a mess. Let's just I'm telling my show. Yeah. When Shorty from the board got busy and was just like, yo, toxic, all of them is corrupt. The lawyers, the managers, it's all corrupt. And then she went on, she did uh the press run. She was on Good Day in New York. Was this year the year that the, the main dude of the Grammys was on some women need to work harder shit? Yes. That wasn't this year. No, that was last year. Okay. Either way, we we know that Listen, that, that was fucking That nuts. was crazy. Especially because he came out that shit like a press conference. Like, he came out and was like, yo, I know we didn't have any women, we didn't need to work harder. <laughs> that was crazy. Well, if, it was, if that wasn't this year, it was carried over into this year yeah. when Shorty, um, and not Shorty, I need to get her name. Uh, it leaves me at the moment. I said the head of the brain was just saying, Shorty needed to make yeah. better music. <laughs> All women are making all the best music. Right. <laughs> that was insane. Women are in every genre ever. Right. The Grammys <laughs> fucking suck. I'm sorry. Oh, here we go. Deborah Dugan. Oh, there you go. Deborah Dugan. I watched Deborah Dugan on plenty of news outlets, and she was perturbed yeah. at the Grammys. That was a big. That was a big thing. For me, it was a big thing. Y'all just seemed to walk right over it. Yeah. I don't understand it, but it's cool. Uh, what else? What else was big? Big moments. Big moments. Um, fun moments, or you didn't, didn't want to get into the well, show? Get my paper. I'm fucking gonna tell you what. I'm gonna tell you what was big right now. I just don't want like this in that place yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we want to go there, we can go there. Where is there? George Floyd. Change, change the the entire year and probably next decade or three. Yeah. Well, that was the one. He, that was that was a worldwide uh, reaction, and that was. Terrifying and sad and beautiful at the same time. Mm -hmm. Seeing the rest of the world protest with us. Yeah. People that people. were in America, people that didn't really have to because it didn't affect them directly. Right. I thought that was beautiful. Um, it finally felt like that enough is enough thing that I feel like everybody is, is a sentiment that happens after every time we see these unfortunate videos of black people men and women being killed by law enforcement. I feel like every time it's been like, yo, this is enough, and then life gets back on track. Right. Mm -hmm. This was the first time where I felt life did not get back on track. At least for a little Change is going to happen. Sense, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah.
I know, I know, I'm not saying it stopped. It then. didn't stop fixed. For the first time, I felt like, no, we're not going to be quiet anymore. We, we've been through this with multiple names, and I've always felt like people have just moved on after a month until the next one. Yeah. This finally felt like, nope, not anymore. Yeah. This is going straight to the top with this one. Yeah. And things are going to change completely yeah. off this one. And we're not there yet. But it, it felt that way. It, was it felt like, a, it felt like a, a, a genuine start. Yeah, it wasn't, but it was unfortunate because then shortly after George Floyd, we had to be on the tail. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was like, you know, you look at, you look at the situation that's going on in the world, and then something like that happens. You know, it, it, it just shows we have a long way to go. But I do like the fact that the world woke up and, you know, we were all had one message. This year wasn't the year that we lost our Dallas guy, both of them, right? That was last year. It's just carryover effect with all of this shit. Racism is worldwide, not racism. Absolutely. It may be worse in America than it is in Dallas. Yeah, it's just worldwide. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just worldwide. 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 It hurts hearing the word beautiful. I know. To this. I know. And I don't mean. But I to, do understand. Yeah. yeah. The aftermath and the after effect and the result was powerful. Yeah. And, 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 that, and, that, and that George Floyd stuff seemed to hit so close to home. It's almost like when, when somebody you knew caught COVID this year mm -hmm. and it changed things for you. Like the fact that Steven Jackson was so close to George Floyd before the world knew about like yeah. it was it was too close to home for me yeah. mm -hmm. um but it did feel good to see the world stand up like that um it felt good to hear new conversations being had like defund the police and yeah. just all these all these different things but all the protests uh nationwide and worldwide i think that was a big thing too that they would protest across the world yeah. for some of the things that were happening in America. Yeah. And that felt good. Yeah. yeah. And granted, like I said, racism is worldwide, so they were probably standing up for shit that's happening in their own country that maybe we aren't as aware of because mm -hmm. they're not as uh, media-driven as America may be, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it, it was it was nice to see that unification in very long over there. Um, rest uh, in peace, George Floyd. Rest in peace, yeah. George Floyd. Rest in peace, Breonna Breonna Taylor. Taylor. Rayshard Brooks. Rayshard Brooks. Everybody. We lost life. We lost life this year. Yes. On a much, on a much uh, smaller scale, of course, coming off of that topic, uh, the sports world adjusting to quarantine and COVID mm -hmm. played a big part in the year for me. A lot of our entertainment was affected. Absolutely. Big time. Absolutely. I didn't think we would get sports at all this year, honestly. I thought it would be we would get a little week or two or three or four and it would be shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, but they've managed to get through a uh, sort of entire season of NBA, a sort of entire no, most of the season of NFL and thus far. They started the new season the next season of the NBA. It, it, it started. I know Rory and I was joking around a lot about this, but I felt like at that time, a lot of people were looking to see how the NBA handled this, to see how they would handle it. Um, there was a lot of skepticism, but somehow they figured out a way. You know, all of the moments where entertainment found a way saved the shit out of me going crazy in my house. Uh, that's going to be a reoccurring thing for me. I never thought the NFL would finish their season either. But the fact that they're about there, yeah, we're close. I mean, my fantasy season is shot to shit. MLB, I could have sworn NFL and MLB. I was like, oh, yeah, this isn't going to last another month. I Yo. thought MLB would have the best chance until, like, three teams got wiped out early on. That is the same thing. So I was like, MLB should be fine. And then the amount of people in the first three weeks, I was like, oh, they're not going to finish I thought NFL would be the one that didn't make it because you're literally in dog piles. It's my second man of the year. As we talk, I'm going to figure out my men of the year. What's the fucking pitcher from the Dodgers? Is that Clayton Kershaw? The guy that made it to the big dance every fucking year? 
only to not finish the job. One of the greatest regular season pitchers in the history of the game to choke like we've never seen him choke. And they won it with no fans in the stands. Clayton Kershaw delivers. Nobody is happier than Clayton Kershaw that no fans were in the stands for sports. <laughs> Adam Silver, oh, seriously. Adam Silver would be also be my man of the year. Just, just about to say, yeah. Adam Silver has to be my Adam man. Silver's in the And George Floyd rest of Adam Silver presidented better than our president. <laughs> they get like money to the team. That whole shit through is crazy. They got everybody locked in the house and okay with it, relatively, except for Paul George. <laughs> Uh, what other moments were this year? Or did it in a good way? Some gave a couple dollars to Adam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. We did lose Regis this year. Yeah. We lost Sean Connery this year. Yeah, heard the gods. Let me just read out the list of names of people that we've lost Kobe Bryant, Gianna Bryant. Chadwick Boseman, Little Richard, Alex Trebek, Ruth G uh, Ginsburg, John Lewis, Eddie Van Halen, Betty White, uh, right, Don Larson, Kenny Rogers, Cliff Robbins. Damn, Cliff Robinson died this year. Cliff, right? Andre Harrell, Andre Harrell family, we love you. Bill Withers, Regis Philbin, Sean Connery, Jerry Stiller, Car Caroline Flack, Naya Rivera, Fred the Godson, Charlie Pride, Black and Mal, Troy Snead, Pop Smoke, King Vaughn, Mo3, FBG Duck, Nick. This whole year was darkness, sadness, death. Right around the corner. That's the boost for the granddad. Like, Blue Benji Kobe shot in broad daylight weeks after signing a record deal at 24. Like, yeah, yeah. It's been hard. It's a rough year. It was. I have Nixon and Fred the Godson record when he passed. Fred, we miss you and we love you, man. Mm, absolutely. Do we have any more moments that were big? All of the presidential shit was big. Yeah. All of the COVID I mean, stuff was I feel big. Like, I feel like so much of the George Floyd our, things. Our PPE I, checks. Election. Our PPE checks. That is well. Stimulus checks. Stimulus that did not stimulate shit except for the rich. Amazon got stimulated pretty good. And Shake Shack. Shake Shack. And they gave it back. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. scammers yeah. that thought of new scams this year, like, oh my oh, god. Where is it next year? Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> You're going down? Oh, don't you worry. Oh, man. I love when people do, they, they, they figure out how to get past it. Yeah, like that. You think the government doesn't have the best accountants in the world? <laughs> how do people commit crimes in 2020? How do you commit a crime? Everything is right here. <laughs> There's all the cameras that everyone has at their house. It's crazy. Like, how do you commit a crime and you pay a cell bill? Yeah. <laughs> and have the phone on you while you can Having Wi Fi and committing crimes. Instagram's listening all the time. Like. <laughs> all right, do you guys want to get into Do you guys want to have a heated debate now, or do you guys want to ease into some of this stuff? Mm. Uh, you guys want to get right in the album of the year? Okay. Most most of these shows place album of the year at the end so you guys can listen all the way through. Here at the JBP, we don't really operate like that. I want to get to the fighting early. Let's do it. I have my can pick I for album season? of the year. Let's, let's do it. Are we, we're breaking them up, though? You can. Hip-hop, R&B? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Where's that buddy fall? Is he hip-hop or R&B? Like, I love Bobby James and I love Kaylani. I just don't know how to put them head to head. <laughs> they shouldn't go head to head. Let's separate them. Rap, let's do rap. Let's do it. Rap albums of the year. Unfortunately, I have a list in my hand of the rap albums that have dropped. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's been such a memorable year creatively. Uh, because the year has gone the way it's gone, I've been watching other things with acts outside of how they choose to create music. Um, like I'm watching how they conduct their business, how they engage their following. I'm watching a bunch of other stuff. But for album of the year, this is the year of the underground hip hop album of the year. Well, shine because they they cleaned up. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're starting early. We're gonna get yeah. to that, but I want to chop it in the, the head early. I love that that happened. Yeah. And a lot of why. Shut up about it. Oh. 
<laughs> Yo, but Rodney Rich. No. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, Rodney Rich was 2019. The Fox is still the number one I know. streaming song I, that's, in that's, 2020. I know. That's his retort. <laughs> yeah. 2019. I, I do love that term, backpack, and where it came and derived from. Yeah, this was the year of the music that plays well in your crib. Yeah. Sorry, people that just focus on the club. Yeah. One year year. And yeah. it shows in the best hip-hop albums this year. Yeah. Even though we flame the Grammys, it, it's representative, the fact that yeah, Jay Electronica and Freddie Gibbs and Alchemist and Royce are... And I, was saying, and I, I don't know if I, we spoke about it on the show, but I wasn't mad at the, the, the Grammys selection for a rap album for the year. Me either. I may not have went with D Smoke only because I'm, you know, I wasn't locked in on D Smoke's album like that. He made a good album for the most part. It's, it still was a good album. Yeah, it was a good album. But you told me it was bad, and I didn't listen to it. I, I think D it Smoke is a talented dude, and I think he's going to have a great career. D Smoke did not deserve to get a good album of the year and album this year. Agreed. And I, and I'm just saying, aside from that, I wasn't mad at the rest of the category. I'm going to read y'all a list of some of the albums or most of the albums. Hip hop to drop this year, y'all give me your thoughts. Let's go. At the end of this. Let's go. Um, we've got Eminem Music to be Murdered by, Mac Miller Circles. Huh? Plus the box. Hey, be sad. Little Wayne Funeral. Circles isn't hip hop. Russ, Shake the Snow Globe. A Boogie with the Hoodie, Worst of Five Nine, ba uh, Lil Baby, Lil Uzi Vert, Jada Kiss, J Electronica, Jordan Lucas, West Side Gun, uh, The Baby, Drake, Chris Brown, Young Thug. Future, Freddie Gibbs, Run the Jewels, Pop Smoke, Juice Square, Logic, Nas, West Side Gun, Big Sean. Conway, the Machine, Young Boy, Never Broke Again, 21 Savage, Reason, Billy the Butcher, T.I., Ty Dolla Sign, King Von, Buster Rhymes, Gentlemen. There's two chains. Two chains, yeah. That's cool. Fusion, Lil Uzi. That's cool. Who wants to start it off? Who wants to be bold? Today? We're starting at five. We're starting at five. Fusion, Uzi, Meg Thee Stallion, Jeezy, St. John, Juicy J, Kid Cudi. Are we, are we doing our, our five? I don't, I don't mind. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, you know my shit. This is hip-hop? Just hip hop. Just hip hop. No R&B. In, in order, I got number one, Freddie Gibbs, Alchemist, Alfredo. Mm. Number two, I got Conway from the King to a God. Mm. Number three, I have Lil Baby, My Turn. Right. Four, I have Stoke God Cooks, Musical Drought. Five, I have Pop Smoke, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon. I have a whole ten here. But I like see. those actually. We have, we have a lot of similar ones. I had. Uh, it wasn't a singular album, but the, the Ransom and Nicholas Craven crime scenes was my favorite. If you put them all together, it's an album. And that's how I'm going. That would be fun. Uh, number two, I had Still God. Number three, I had uh, uh, Kyle Way. Number four, I had a tie between Freddie Gibbs and Boldy James and Alchemist albums, because I like them both equally. And number five, I don't recall what I had. I'm going off I think I had Bad Buddy, that's it. I, I was going off, by the way, I wasn't mad at, we killed 